Grab your Wii out of storage and put some fresh AA batteries in the remote. We're about to empower it to play thousands of retro games in just a matter of minutes. In this video, you'll learn everything it takes step by step to set up RetroArch on your modded Nintendo Wii and add an entirely new dimension of value to your system. Face front, true believer. Grab the SD card out of your Wii system and power on your PC. We're on a retro gaming mission and we're starting now. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell to become part of the conversation. And check the video description for the links featured in the video and the latest show notes and updates. The first step in the process is to download RetroArch from the RetroArch website linked in the description below. Scroll down on the downloads page until you see the section specific to the Nintendo Wii. There's a download link here. Click on it to download the latest version of RetroArch in 7Z format. In your downloads folder, you'll find the RetroArch.7Z file that you downloaded from the website. You'll also want to have access to the ROM files that you want to copy over to your Wii and also any system files that you intend to copy over. You'll need to uncompress the RetroArch.7Z file to be able to use it with your Wii system. It creates a series of folder in folder structures, but we'll take a look at just a moment at how to address that. Once it's uncompressed, delete the 7Z file from your downloads folder in order to eliminate clutter. Take the SD card from your Nintendo Wii system and insert it into your PC. Start by copying the ROMs folder over to the root of the SD card. You can leave any ROMs in that folder in subfolders and also leave the ROM files themselves compressed in zip format because the Wii will be able to deal with them just fine. Grab the ROMs folder, drag it over to the root of the SD card, and make sure that if you drag it over, don't copy it into a subfolder. Make sure it's posted directly to the root. Navigate back to your downloads folder. Go into the RetroArch folder that you just uncompressed. Then go into the folder that says Apps and grab specifically the folder that says RetroArch-Wii. Grab that folder and drag it and drop it over into the Apps folder on your SD card. And depending upon how you have File Explorer laid out, you may have to scroll up a bit to get to the Apps folder at the top of the list. You can close out File Explorer for the SD card and remove the SD card from your system, but leave File Explorer open for the Downloads folder. We're going to need to come back to it in just a few moments. Insert the SD card into your Nintendo Wii and power on your system. From the home screen on your Nintendo Wii, navigate to the Homebrew channel with your Wiimote and select it with A. Then select Start to launch the Homebrew channel. In the Homebrew channel, you'll see a new listing for RetroArch. Navigate to RetroArch with the Wiimote pointer and select it with the A button to launch it for the first time. Then select Load to start the application. Turn your Wiimote sideways and put the D-pad to the left side. You can also connect a Wii Classic controller to take advantage of the extra buttons that most games use. To load a game, use the D-pad to scroll down to Load Content and select it with the number 2 button on the Wiimote. From the list of possible destinations, navigate down to SD card, and as you also note here, you can store your content on a USB device as well. But in this case, we've put it on the SD card. Navigate to SD and select it with number 2 on the Wiimote. You'll see the list of files and folders on your SD card, and ROMs is located here. Scroll down with the D-pad to ROMs and select it with number 2. I have ROM files in this folder in subdirectories for Genesis, NES, and SNES. I'm going to select a Genesis game, Spider-Man Maximum Carnage. Scroll down with the D-pad and select the ROM folder that you want to use, in this case Genesis, by pressing the number 2 button. Then select the zip file with the ROM that you want to play, in this case it's going to be Spider-Man Maximum Carnage. Scroll down, pick the game you want, with the number 2 button on the Wiimote. If your games are still zipped up, you'll need to select Browse Archive with the number 2 button on the remote in order to extract the game in its proper format. In this case, it's going to be a .md or .mega drive file. Select the game file inside the archive using the number 2 button on the Wiimote. Then you'll be prompted to select a core. The core is basically the software that you need in order to run the emulator. Pick the core that you want from the list with the number 2 button to start the game. It's at this point that RetroArch creates a new folder on your SD card right on the root and it's also named RetroArch. This is a separate folder from the one that you copied over to the Apps folder. This new folder has a folder structure in place that RetroArch requires. And this is when you can copy over your system files. To back out of this game and to go back to the main menu, press the Home button on the Wiimote. 
Use the D-pad to navigate down the list to close content and select close content with the number two button on the Wiimote. This will take you back to the RetroArch main menu. To get your system folder with the BIOS files copied over to your SD card, navigate down with the D-pad to quit RetroArch and select it with the number two button. Then you can power off your Wii system, remove the SD card, put it back into your PC, and then take a moment to check out the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. One of the most enjoyable things I've ever done in my gaming journey was learn how to write games and the music soundtracks for them. Check this. When I searched in Skillshare, they actually have a number of different courses for doing just that. And with classes just like this one that I like, you can learn how to write your own RPG games and get a skill today that you didn't have yesterday. There are no ads and they're always adding new classes so that you can follow your creativity wherever it takes you. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare Premium. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. With your SD card reinserted into your PC, you might remember that the last thing that we did was copy the RetroArch-Wii file over to the Apps folder on your SD card. You'll need to go back to the Downloads folder on your PC. The goal here is to be able to copy the system folder that has your system BIOS files into the RetroArch folder that's newly created on your SD card. Navigate into the RetroArch folder that's on your SD card. Now you can just take the system folder and drag and drop it directly onto the root of the SD card. The folder that has your system BIOS file specifically needs to be named system in order to properly overwrite it on your SD card. If you have your system BIOS file somewhere on your computer other than a folder named system, just drill into that folder and copy everything in it and then copy it into the pre-existing system folder on your SD card. And as you see here inside the system folder on the SD card, no matter whether you copy over a system folder and overwrite or just dump them right in the folder, you'll find the BIOS files you need on your SD card. Remove your SD card and close out any instances of File Explorer. Put the SD card back into your Wii and power on your Wii system. Use the Wii mode to launch the Homebrew channel again from the Wii main menu. When the Homebrew channel appears, at the menu again, select RetroArch with the A button and select Load with A. And when the RetroArch main menu appears, you'll now have access to content that requires those system BIOS files. I'm about to share with you an important bonus tip, how to set up playlists so you don't have to constantly drill into folders and subfolders just to launch a game. Use the D-pad to move the marker down the playlist and select it with the number two button on the Wiimote. Inside playlist, you'll see an option for import content. Select import content with the number two button. You'll see an option for manual scan. All this means is that you'll just need to tell it where to look. Press the number two button to select manual scan. From the list of menu choices, select content directory by pressing the number two button. You can now select SD or USB depending upon where you copied your games. In this case, they're on the SD card, so SD with the number two button. Then select the directory that has your ROMs in it. In this case, it's called, wait for it, ROMs. Select ROMs with the number two button. From here, you can select scan this directory with the number two button. The program's intuitive enough to scan the subdirectories. Press the number one button to go back. Use the D-pad to scroll down to start scan and select it with the number two button. As I only have a few ROMs in the folders, the scan is pretty much instantaneous. To see your newly created playlist, press the number one button, then press the number one button again. You'll see a newly created playlist in the list called ROMs. Select it with the number two button, and inside ROMs you'll see all of the games that you have stored on your SD card listed in a convenient playlist. There's a lot more fun that you can have with your modded Wii. Check out this video shown here on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below.